Before getting into how to optimize or start meditation, you need to understand three things. What is and how our perception works, what interoception is, and what exteroception is. Your perception is the ability to become aware of something using your senses. Interoception is perception of everything that's inside the body. And exteroception is perception of everything that's outside the body. With those definitions out of the way, it's important to know that you can't perceive every sensation at once. Instead, think of your perception or attention or focus or whatever word that you want to use as spotlights. Meaning you can focus all of your attention to a targeted area. You can shift the spotlights to be smaller or broader, to be intensified or dimmed, or you can have one or multiple spotlights. Meditation is just improving your spotlights. So why is interoception and exteroception important for meditation? Well, the minute you close your eyes, you shift your attention from exteroceptive to interoceptive. Meaning meditation can allow someone to become more focused externally or internally by either meditating with your eyes closed or open. So, so to actually perform these two types of meditation, interoceptive meditation is usually performed sitting or lying down with your eyes closed and focusing on your breathing, while exteroceptive meditation is usually done with eyes open and focusing on a single object or focal point. Blinking and changes in expression is okay to do. And to figure out which type of meditation that you should do, ask yourself if you are someone that is more interoceptive dominant or exteroceptive dominant. Whichever one you are dominant in, you should do the opposite. So if you are interoceptive dominant, you should train yourself to be more exteroceptive. To determine which one you are dominant in, do a self-assessment of performing a quick interoceptive meditation and an exteroceptive meditation and see if you can focus more internally or externally. Another thing that can help you determine which type of meditation you should do is asking yourself if you wanna be more alert and more focused or if you just wanna calm down. Having a more emphasis, longer inhale and a shorter exhale like this will make you more relaxed. And having a more balanced breath where both your inhale and exhale are equal in emphasis and length will allow you to focus more on alertness and attention. A term for this is cyclic breathing, where you follow your initial inhale with an exhale, and it's also your default breathing form. However, this means that non-cyclic breathing will make you more aware of your breathing, which will ultimately aid you in your interoceptive meditation. So in other words, the more unnatural your breathing style is, the more you will be focused on your breath. A popular non-cyclic breathing method is box breathing. Something that is very important to note when meditating is that meditation is just a refocusing practice. Most people think that they can't meditate because their mind wanders. However, the more your mind wanders and you have to pull it back to attention, the better. Because you're triggering your brain's neuroplasticity. If you don't wander, it tells your brain that nothing is wrong and that nothing has to change. The idea of neuroplasticity is something I covered in a previous video where I summarized Andrew Huberman's video about learning. So I recommend you watch that one as well. And for meditation for sleep, normal meditation actually makes falling asleep more difficult because it's a focusing practice and sleeping involves focusing less. However, meditation can still help with having more quality sleep because meditating throughout the day reduces stress and a reduction in stress reduces a hormone called cortisol which improves the quality of sleep at night. If you want to get better at falling or staying asleep or falling back asleep if you wake up in the middle of the night, a practice of yoga nidra or an NSDR done at any time throughout the day can reduce the total amount of sleep that you need at night. So a meditation is not ideal for enhancing sleep. However, yoga nidra and NSDR are beneficial for replacing sleep that you've lost. Andrew Huberman has his own protocol for the most optimal form of meditation and I'm going to summarize it so if you want the steps in detail you can go watch his actual podcast I'll put the link in the description and just skip to the very last time stamp time stamp his protocol is called space time bridging so you focus your attention to your breathing with your eyes closed then you open your eyes and you focus your attention to the palm of your hand like this and then something in front of you 
and then something far away from you, then visualize the entire earth, then visualize the entire universe, then close your eyes again and bring your attention back to your breathing. With each one of those steps being for the, the duration of three breaths. And that is everything that I learned from this Huberman Lab episode. It was rather longer than the other summaries, but I hope it was still useful to you.